bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. Thank God for Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, it is that hour, that 6.30 hour. It is time for prayer and Bible study tonight. And uh, I'm just so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. I just thank God for the privilege <clears throat> of being in the house tonight, in my house. Uh, and I'm glad to invite all of you into uh, my library that we might study the word tonight. We might share uh, in encouraging each other tonight. Um, I talked about uh, several weeks ago or, or not even that long ago. I talked about the fact that we have to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And these are some discouraging times, but thanks be to God that we are able to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Uh, and that's what we want to do. We have, we, have to, we have to encourage ourselves. We have to continually um, keep ourselves before God. We have to continually keep our situations before God. We have to continually allow God to minister to us, to share with us. And then we have to share with each other. We have to love on each other. We have to let each other know um, that we are here for and uh, you come in prayerful you come in with your mind stayed on Jesus Christ um, we are the followers of we are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ um, and and all through tonight I want to encourage us um, with several understandings. One, I want to encourage us um, to understand that God is greater than any circumstance we can engage. Any situation that we encounter, God is greater. And so that's going to kind of be the focus tonight as we, as we pray, as we study. Um, I want you to keep in front of you uh, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. That's my wife, y'all. I want to keep in front of you uh, the fact that God is greater than any of our circumstances. I, I, I'm excited right there. We could go home right on that. We could just go home uh, and celebrate the fact that the God that we serve, uh, the creator of life, the creator of everything that we see, Amen. How you doing? How you doing, Vi? How you doing? How you doing, Mary? Come on in, y'all. Let me know you're here. Don't just come in, but let me know that you're here. Uh, but we could celebrate the fact that the creator of everything is greater than any situation that occurs in his creation. God created everything. He's able uh, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I told y'all that's my that's my mantra. That's my scripture. That's my that's my understanding for what we are experiencing right now. God is able. If you've ever gotten a text message from me, if you've ever gotten any kind of communication from me, you'll find either one of two things at the conclusion of that communication. One will be glory because I just believe that God has given us everything that we experience for his glory. Even this uh, will bring glory to God. And uh, if, if I don't say glory at the conclusion of my of my communication with you, I'll tell you that God is able because I just believe that God is able. So I, I just want to hang out with you all tonight uh, in prayer. I want you I want you to drop some prayer requests um, uh, in the in the text box. Uh, let me know what you're praying for, what you're what you're in need of prayer about. Uh, what what uh, is on your mind? What your what your concerns are, and we'll be talking about that as we are uh, as we are dealing with prayer tonight. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all come on in. Keep coming on in. Come on in. Amen. 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 My son said victory. Yes. That's our theme for this year. That we are victoriously overcoming every situation. Hear me, y'all. We are victoriously overcoming. I'm going to tell you how, how, how great the Spirit of God is. The Spirit of God gave the Union Baptist Church a theme this year. Every year we thematically uh, outline our year. And the theme this year, watch this, is the year of victoriously overcoming. And I, I want to read you, I want to read you our scriptures for, for our theme. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it says real simply, These things have I spoke, or I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Listen. In the world, in this cosmos, you shall have tribulation. God help me here. But be of good cheer. Tell you to tell somebody in your house, be of good cheer. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. And so we are we are overcoming victoriously this year. And that's in John chapter 16, verse 33. But then over a little further in the New Testament, in 1 John chapter 5, we conclude our theme with verse 4 and 5. And verse 4 and 5 in John chapter, 1 John chapter 5 says, Whosoever committeth uh, sin transgresseth <clears throat> uh, excuse me that's chapter 3 I'm, I'm giving y'all the wrong scripture chapter 5 verse 4 says for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory everybody say victory that overcometh the world even our faith and so verse 5 concludes it and says who is it that over who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Praying for essential employees that, that have to go out. We're praying victorious prayers for our essential employees. We're praying overcoming prayers for those who have been stricken with the virus. We're praying uh, that even in this month, this month is thematically designed to be the month of power. And the saints have got to walk in the power that God has given us. And so let's open up tonight. Let's open up tonight. Let's open up tonight. Father, we thank you in this place. You are worthy of our praise, God. You are worthy of honor and glory. You are worthy of all the majesty that is due unto your name. For you alone are God. You are great God. And you're a wonderful God. You're a marvelous God. You're a mighty God. You're a strong God. You're the God of gods. You have all power in heaven and in earth. We thank you, God, that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all all that we could ask or think and so tonight we extol your name we bless your name God we magnify you in this place we glorify you and we let you know that God you are the God of gods we beseech you even now by the mercies of God that you allow us to be presented to you present our bodies to you as living sacrifices that we might be holy and acceptable unto you and and prove what is that good and reasonable service unto you God we pray that you move our mindset to not be conformed to this world. The world is trying to shape us and mold us to its convictions, but we thank you, God, tonight that we are not going to be molded and shaped and conformed to this world, but you, by the power of your word, the washing of the water of your word, you will transform us by the renewing of our minds. There it is, God. Renew our minds tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray that you give us a fresh anointing, a new mindset, an understanding of who you are, that as we recognize who who you are we can understand who we are and so God have your way in us tonight move by your power move by your grace move by your spirit let your ministering angels begin to speak and touch and move on the lives of those that have been infected and infected with this coronavirus we speak life and healing we speak deliverance in the name of Jesus we thank you uh, God for those families that are going through tremendous trial and tribulation right now. You said in the world we shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer for you, God help me here, have overcome the world. We thank you for your overcoming power. We thank you for the power of your spirit that brings back to our remembrance every word that you've given unto us. And so God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you move by your spirit in the hearts and the minds of your people. God, give us an overcoming spirit. Give us a victorious spirit. Even 
even in the midst of this outbreak. We thank you, God, that we're able to do what we do because you're able to do all things. And so, God, we give you praise. We lay accolades on you. We extol you. We express worship unto your name. We worship you tonight in spirit and in truth. God, have your way on the hearts and the minds of your people in the bodies of those that have been affected. And then, God, we pray for the psyche, the psychology, the mindset, the mentality of the people of this earth. We pray, God, that you would ease their minds, that you would allow peace to enter into their spirit. We ask that you would give us all the peace of God that passes even our own understanding because, God, some of our understandings have been warped. They have been moved by what we see, and we thank you that your word declares that we do not walk by what we see, but you said we walk by faith. Increase our faith tonight. Increase our understanding that you are God and that you are God alone. We pray tonight that you would open up our eyes that we may see that there are greater for us than there are that's in this world. We thank you that yes, the virus is spreading, but the angels of God have, have, have surrounded us. And so God, have your way right now. I thank you, God, that you are my God. I thank you that we can personalize who you are. You are the God of gods, but you make room for each and every one of us because you take up your dwelling place on the inside of us in the person of your Holy Spirit. And because we are impacted and empowered, enamored and endowed with your spirit, we recognize that greater is he who is in us, hallelujah, than he who is in the world. And so God, have your way in us tonight. Have your way through us tonight. Have your way to us tonight. Become God to us in this trying situation. God, we recognize that every time we experience something that we've never experienced before, you are able to become God in that experience. And so expand our understanding of who you are greater. Uh, make our conceptualization of who you are greater because of what we're experiencing right now. And then God, get glory out of what we're experiencing. Have your way, God. Even now, there will be glory after this. You will get the victory because of this. Men are calling on your name all over the world. Your name is being published in all the earth. And so we thank you that the name of God through the name of Jesus Christ is being published not only on this continent, but on every continent, in every country, in every city. People are crying out for the most high God. And so we thank you, God, even now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that ministry can occur out of misery. And so we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We say, have your way. Do what you want to do. We ask that you would protect your people right now. Place a hedge of protection around the saints of God that we might be able to minister to the misery of the masses. We thank you, God, that you are a great God, the great God, the one true God, the only God who is living and in power even as we speak. And so let your power be released through your kingdom, citizens. God, we are people of your kingdom. And so there's some stuff we don't even have to pray for. We just believe that you've already made it happen. Thank you, God, that you are the king of kings and that you are the Lord of lords. And we pray tonight that you will have your way. Do what you want to do in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Now we'll intersperse prayers all through the evening. We're just going to be praying and talking uh, about how we handle this crisis, man. How do we deal with what's going on? How do we how do we navigate these vicissitudes, the ups and downs, the 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 inconsistencies that we're experiencing right now? We we need to talk about that. I read the newspapers today. I have I have three newspapers here. I have three newspapers here. I have the, the uh, Allentown Morning Call, uh, and then the Allentown Morning Call front page. All I'm going to read on all of them. Front page says. Front page says. Uh, schools are going to stay closed indefinitely. 4,000 cases in this city. The county is seeking sites for the hospital. Surge in unemployment uh, claims strain the system. Uh, Easter alteration. The, the president now says that we're not going to get back on track uh, uh, for Easter. That's the front page of the Allentown Morning Call. The USA Today says that the Olympics has a new update. They've got a new date for the Olympics. It's been canceled. Death lies in uranium. Was it suicide or murder? Order. Plight of the dreamers is heavy with irony. Hospital lacks staff to run ventilators. Life may change for us all. How this crisis could reshape U.S. history. I mean, all on the front page of 
every newspaper I picked up today is gloom, doom, and bad news. The Philadelphia Inquirer says Wolf uh, extends the order to stay at home. Tough medicine. Residents of 26 counties are homebound through April. The rising toll in New Jersey. 200 people, 198 people are dead. 52 people in Pennsylvania. There's a virtual doctor who had contracted the virus, but the good news is she's still practicing telemedicine. Um, there's a picture on the on the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, and and I don't know if y'all can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Can y'all see that? You see it now. Uh, that's the Leah Chorus Center. In the Leah Chorus Center, it's being turned into a hospital. The nation on both coasts are urgent pleas coming out for volunteers. Daycare center crisis. We can't do this month after month. All I'm trying to tell you is that if you listen to the report that's coming in the newspaper if you listen to the report that's coming on the television you will become overwhelmed with grief you'll become overwhelmed with I can't take this anymore but I come to tell you that that's the time for you to pray it's time for you to pray why because prayer is a spiritual activity that leads to physical results Prayer is a, is, a, is a spiritual activity that leads to physical uh, results. Thank you, Bishop McInnes. Bishop McInnes, let me plug his book real quick. Uh, Bishop, Bishop Archie McInnes, who pastors right around the corner from me uh, at, at, at a great church here in, in, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He's, he's written a book called Prayer Prevents Damage. Real powerful piece, real powerful piece. Just on prayer, a spiritual survival kit. Bishop Archie McGinnis, prayer. Uh, and and his great church uh, and and I'm, I'm sharing just a piece of his book tonight because he talks about the fact it's crucial to know that everything that is physical or natural exists because of the spiritual I mean in the beginning God before anything God uh, before creation God outside of eternity God uh, it, and so and so everything that is physical or natural exists because of the spiritual and it is through faith listen to me it is through faith that we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God this is the Hebrew writer talking God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Did y'all hear what I just said? Now everything in the in the natural, in the, in the physical world is a result of that which was already in the spiritual world. Everything that we see in the natural comes from what God has devised in his mind, the logos of God, the, 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 the conceptualization, the understanding, and then the rolling out of that uh, is, is the mind of God. That is how we see anything in the natural. Y'all missed it. Come back and catch me. Uh, everything in the natural, in the physical, is a result of something that is happening in the spiritual. The Hebrew writer says that now through faith, we understand. Come on, don't 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 y'all don't y'all play dumb on me tonight. Come on with me. I need somebody to throw some hearts up on that. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Did y'all catch it? Everything in the natural, in the in the physical, is a result of that which is in the spiritual. The Bible says in the very beginning that God spoke <laughs> and when God spoke the word of God went into activity and I and I, I, I share this almost every time I teach because it's 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 fundamental to understanding how God operates God operates when his word is presented in the world and when his word is presented in the world the very spirit of God catches the word of God and brings what God's word says into creative power he says that through the through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that th things which are seen were not made of things which do appear Everything that we experience comes from that which we do not see. You've never seen God one day in your life. You've never experienced God in the flesh. You weren't here when Jesus walked the earth. But the truth of the matter is everything that we see, everything that we experience, everything that we know, that we have gnoscos, we have knowledge of, everything on this earth came as a result of the Spirit through the Word. Are y'all hearing me? The Spirit moves through the Word. I'm trying to help you to understand. The Spirit 
moves through the word. There is nothing that is without that which is, was, and is to come. And that is the word of God. Jesus is he who is and was and is to come. And so if we are going to get a handle on that which is happening in the physical or in the natural, we have got to get a handle on that which is spiritual. Come on, somebody. You got to get that word in your spirit. There's got to be an understanding of the significance of the scriptures. Everybody say scriptures. Come on, type scriptures for me. You've got to understand that you get your marching orders from the scriptures. It is the word of God that's going to soothe your your, your, your mind from all of its upheaval. It is the word of God that's going to give you strength in the weakest moments of your life. It is the word. We are word people. Let me sit on that for a minute. We are word people. The people of God through Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know what kind of God you have. Everybody of different faith traditions that you deal with and, and and I'm a Christian my faith tradition is Christianity I'm a follower of God through the intercessory ministry and the mediatorial process of Jesus Christ he is the one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus I thank God for Jesus because through Jesus I have the word and through the word I have life because the words of Christ are spirit God help me here and they are life are y'all hearing me tonight and so and so and so how then do we navigate the vicissitudes of a viral outbreak that no one has any idea when it's going to end no one has any idea the broad sweeping context of this viral outbreak no one has any idea of how many people are actually going to be affected they're giving um, numbers based on the models that they have y'all ever seen them do the models for a hurricane uh, one day it's going to sweep up the coast of the east coast the next day it's going to batter into Florida the next day it's going to hit South Carolina or Georgia the next day it's going to come up and then turn in around Delaware and Virginia the next day it's coming all the way up to Pennsylvania and the day after that it's going to take out New England they have no idea what these models are really going to show but we ah God we have the mind of Christ we have the word of God we have the assurance that God will be with us. As a matter of fact, he said to Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so and so, I've got to now um, understand uh, what it is that I've got to do to be able to get through times like this. Are y'all hearing me? Got to be able to understand it. And it's quite simple. I've got to know what God's word says because I've got to connect to the spiritual to understand how to navigate the natural and the physical. Uh, and so, and so, and so, and so, the word of faith is how you got saved. Okay, okay, you're looking at me funny. It is, it is prayer and Bible study. I'm gonna give you this, and then we gonna we gonna pray again. Uh, but I'm gonna give you this. I said it's the word of faith by which you met God. Uh, 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 in Romans chapter eight, uh, Romans chapter ten. Everybody got Romans chapter ten? In Romans chapter ten, watch this. In verse eight. Uh, of Romans chapter 10 it says but what saith it I'm in the King James Version it says the word is close to you it's nigh thee even pulpit, I am preaching the word of faith are y'all hearing me? I'm preaching a word of faith, and 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 watch what watch what watch what the writer says. The Roman writer says, uh, "But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt ah come on, confess with thy mouth. Now 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 listen. Uh, everything in the natural and the physical 
is a result of that which is in the spiritual. And if I'm going to understand how to grab that which is in the spiritual, I've got to understand how to grab the word because in the spiritual, it was the word that brought forth everything in the natural. I just told you what happened in Genesis chapter 1. God spoke. Verse, third verse of Genesis chapter 1 said, and God said, that's the word, that's Jesus coming forth in his manifestation power. The spirit grabs what Jesus manifests through the word and brings it into manifestation reality, brings it into what we see. God said, light be and light became. And every time God said in the first chapter of Genesis, whatever God spoke, whatever God's word was, that was what the reality became. And so uh, the, the writer of Romans says uh, that the word is close to you. It's so close. It's in your mouth uh, and it's in your heart. And that word is the word of faith, which we preach that if you confess with your mouth, you've got to speak. Watch this. You've got to speak what God God says if you confess with your mouth what uh, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart now listen uh, you got saved because of what you said and what you believe because you believed what you said come on somebody I couldn't get saved unless I believed what I said because if I just said it, it's called a mental ascent and it really doesn't change anything. And there's a lot of people, let me stop and part parenthetically and help some of you because some of you have made mental ascents that God is real. Some of you have made mental ascents that Jesus is real, but you have not made a heart transformative commitment. Necessarily, in terms of biblical terms, is not necessarily the thing that's beating in your chest that's about as big as your fist. Uh, the heart for man is the innermost recesses of your being. It is the spirit. It is the spirit of man. And God says, when you believe in your spirit that Jesus is who I said he is, who I made, who, or who, who he is uh, to be, because he's not made, uh, but who he is to be, he is the son of God. He is the God man. He is the God presented to us in the flesh. He is the man manifestation of God in human form. When you understand that, the Bible says if you believe that in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the, the, the resulting action is a spiritual action that you are saved, born again, resurrected, or not, or rather not resurrected, but regenerated, uh, and your spirit now has become connected to God. And at that very moment, the spirit of the living God now moves into your being and becomes a part of who you are. So you are not only connected to God, you are a you are a a, a major part of the divine uh, process of redemption. God has redeemed you, and He redeemed you for the purpose of redeeming others. And so He gives you the power of His Spirit. Now, this power is only activated when you understand that the Word, God help me here, is the is the is the catalyst for unleashing the power of God. You need the power of God for your healing. Healing, you need a word. You need the power of God for your deliverance. You need a word. You need a power of God, the power of God for your peace. You need a word. God will give you perfect peace or keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on him. I've got to understand that my mind's got to be renewed now. In crisis situations, you really understand your mind needs to be renewed. I need y'all to understand right now. You, you cannot go through this thinking that you're going to go through it simply in your own mental capacity. Uh, because I just showed you the world will try to infiltrate your mind with nothing but negativity. The, 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 the negativity of the world, somebody said the world is crazy. <laughs> uh, hey, hey man, the world, the world is, 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 is off the chain crazy. And the world will continue to bombard you with information and data that will cause your mind to be diverted from the divine. Are y'all hearing me? And that's really what the, what, what, what the enemy of God wants to do. He, he wants to cause your mind to be diverted from the divine. Can I go back to the beginning and help you? When, when, when all of this started in the Genesis account, when you, when you read Genesis chapter number three, uh, actually you gotta read one and two, but, but if you read Genesis chapter two, you find out that God gave man a command. In, in verse 15, Genesis chapter 2, uh, the Bible says that the Lord took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to dress the garden, to work and to keep it. And then he told him uh, of the tree of knowledge, or verse 16, he said, uh, of every tree in the garden you can eat. 
He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, verse 17, he said, thou shalt not eat of it because the day you eat thereof, you will surely die. And then God gives him a woman, says, it's not good for you to be alone. I'm going to provide you a help that's suitable. And, and, and then uh, those individuals who have been created by God, impacted and empowered when God breathed his breath into them, giving them the spirit of God. God gave them one thing, a commandment. He gave them one thing, uh, 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 an edict to be obedient to the word, the commandment that he gave them. And when they sinned or when they disobeyed God in, in, in the third chapter, uh, the Bible says uh, that what, what happened was that there was a, a wind of, of adverse words that went into the mind of Eve. And, 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 and when the adverse words from this element of the world went into her mind it diverted her attention from the divine are y'all hearing what i'm saying and and so the bible says that that now when the serpent was was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman yea hath god said there's a there's a divergent wind that's a wind that's that's trying to take you away from your devotion to the divine hath god said ah uh, uh that that uh, that you may not you may not eat of every tree in the garden causing her to question the accuracy of what God said y'all catch it uh, a divergent wind trying to divert your attention from the divine and he start talking to the serpent because when your mind gets so overloaded with worldly stuff you start engaging in worldly stuff so she said we may eat of every tree of the garden uh, we, but, but we may we, 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 but of the tree in the midst of the garden God said you may not eat of it uh, neither, neither shall you touch it lest you die now God never said that but because you listened to a divergent wind a divergent word that took you away uh, a divergent word from the world that took you away from your, your, your distracted you from your attention to the divine it puts you in a position now to make up stuff how many of y'all making up stuff now that you're hearing all these things that are going on um, around you in the world and these divergent winds of, of worldly words are filling your mind you're seeing all this stuff in the newspaper and now you change what God said to suit what's happening around you we have got to learn that it is the word of God period end of story uh, and I thank God for this platform because there are so many now who are trying to move away from the truth of God's word is is something that we ought not uh, we ought not consider to be accurate anymore and that the Bible doesn't have what we need and that the Bible if man please the Bible has been blessing us for over 2,000 years the word of God has been transforming lives. The word of God has been empowering individuals to handle situations like this. And I just want to tell you tonight that I'm not going to challenge God as to the accuracy and the authority and the acceptability of his word. It is the scriptures that's going to help you get through this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you one more time that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We thank you, God, that you're blessing even now the first responders that are on the front lines. I pray personally, God, that you bless my daughter, Cornita Q. Haley. I pray that as she works as a chaplain in the New York Presbyterian Hospital, that you place a hedge of protection around her and everyone in her situation who are working to help and to aid and to minister and to provide medicinal help and to <clears throat> assist those who are going through trial, tragedy, trauma, not just those with the virus, because there are others who are in the hospital who are concerned. And so, God, I pray that you place a hedge of protection around them. I pray even now that you pray that you bless every family, every family that's going through. <clears throat> I pray right now. God, that you would calm them, that you would give them peace. 
I pray right now, God, that you would touch every person that is logged in on this live, that, that's looking for answers, that's looking for something to encourage them. I pray even now that you would build them up with your most holy faith, that you would strengthen them, establish them, settle them in your word, that your word might be the lamp unto their path and the light unto their feet. I pray, God, that you would just continue to have your way in our midst. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Have your way now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I, I want to talk a little bit tonight, and all I'm talking tonight is word. All, all I'm talking tonight is word. I, I, I want to talk a little bit tonight about about this situation and how uh, we can handle it. One of, the, one of the scriptures that God gave me, and I'm going to read the scripture in its entirety tonight. I'm going to read the scripture in its entirety tonight. <clears throat> it is Psalm 90, not Psalm 91, but Psalm 90. If you have your Bibles, and you should, it's Bible study, turn to Psalm number 90, Psalm number 90. And so, and so, uh, let me, uh, let me read Psalm 90 for you out of the King James Version uh, tonight. It says, Lord, listen, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or even the um, uh, thou had formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God thou turnest man to destruction and saith return ye children of men for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Y'all need to hear how great God is. Thou carriest them away <clears throat> as with a flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth, and it groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our year are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us, listen, to number our days. God help me here. So that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to thy or to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years we have seen evil. Y'all hear y'all hear what the psalmist said? Psalmist said, Lord, we done been through this enough. Uh, make our years uh, just like they was when we was going through. Uh, make the rest of our years better than what they were before. He says, make us glad according to the days wherein thou had afflicted us and the years wherein we've seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants. Show us what you've already done. Show us what you're about to do and thy glory unto their children. He says, and let the beauty of the Lord God uh, be upon us and establish thou the work of of our hands upon us yea the work of our hands establish thou it that psalm really and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it I just wanted you to hear it but that psalm in the first verse really gives us an indication of the greatness of God because it really says to us that God has been will be and ever shall be with us God was here before we were here God is here after we're here God is here while we're here and God will never leave us nor forsake us the isness of God is what you got to get in your spirit You've got to get the isness of God. You ever conjugate the verb, the word, the verb be? To conjugate the verb be, it is, it is, I am, you are, he, she, or it is. Y'all just missed it. Catch it. Come on back. To conjugate the word be, it is, I am, you are, he, she, or it is. Y'all still didn't get it. Come on back. I'm going to do it one more time. To conjugate the word be is, I am, you are, he, she, or it is. If I'm going to understand that I am a part of anything that is actual, 
that means that I have being. The first verse of Psalm 90 says that Lord thou hast been. The word been talks about being because if, I, if I've been then that means that I was or I am. God never could be was because God always is. And so the isness of God has got to be understood in our mind that the isness of God is beyond creation. The isness of God is beyond the end. And the isness of God is everlasting. And so the God who keeps us in the midst of our tragic and trying situations is the God who has always been. He's the God that created everything that we see. He's the God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. He's been with us through every generation. And so if God was with you last week, guess what? He'll be with you this week. And he'll be with you next week. And he'll be with you the week after that. I'm trying to encourage you in the Lord. I've got God with me. And so I'm not going to worry because God is with me. His being consists of this. God is the I am. Period. He says, I am. Whatever I desire to be in the moment that I desire to be it, I will be it in your midst. I don't even have to become it because I am it. Y'all missed it. Oh, my God. God says, I don't have to become anything. I am. And he says, I am that I am. If you need healing, I am healing. And so, and so we've got to learn how to appropriate the I am in our being. In the, in the life that we're living, whatever we're going through, we've got to learn how to appropriate the I am in the midst of what we're dealing with. I will never allow my circumstances to overshadow the understanding of my God. I will never become diverted in my attention to the divine because of the dilemmas that I experience every day. I have to understand that God is. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all hearing me? I, yeah, yeah. I am. You are. And God ever shall be. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, thank God for his word, man. Thank God for his word. He says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place. Watch it for all generations. And so he, he has been our, our dwelling place. He will be our dwelling place. He shall continue to be our dwelling place. And so and so in that in that in that in, in that regard, y'all, in that regard, then we've got to understand when serious issues occur in our lives. Our first tendency as humans, everybody has this, our first tendency as humans um, is, to, is to react with um, panic, to react with fear, um, to, to, to misunderstand what's really going on around us, and, and we think it, it, it's all about us. We think I've got to do this. I've got to get it all together. We, we, we panic and we fear. We become anxious. We fret over what might happen. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to resolve some of your fears right now. We fret over what we think may happen. We fret over what we think we're going to do. And, and, and then we come to the realization that there's really nothing we can do. Uh, and then when we get to that realization that there's really nothing we can do, your panic and your fear goes to a whole nother level. You, you, you freak out all the way. <clears throat> but what you ought to do instead of going through this uh, conniption of fear and fretting, you've got to remember that the I am, come on y'all, is with you. I've got to understand that I never face any situation alone. As a believer in God through Jesus Christ, I am, uh, uh, I've seen the lightning flashing, I've heard the thunder roll, mm -hmm. y'all know that song, I've felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul, never to leave me, never to leave me alone, and the chorus says no, never alone, no, never alone. He promised, y'all. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So, so, so when we encounter um, problems and, and, and serious issues in our lives, you, you cannot face it on your own in fear and fretting. But you got to remember that God's presence, there it is, 
the presence of God is with you and uh, as believers not only is his presence watch this his spirit lives in you God help me here uh, he's he's never you're never alone because you have to call him anyway you have to send him in let me let me help y'all in, in your prayer life stop talking about Lord go by the hospital God's already by the hospital come on he's everywhere he the 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 the, the understanding of what, the attributes of God one of the three major attributes of God is that God is omnipotent that means he has all power God is omniscient that means he has all knowledge and God is omnipresent which means that there is no place that can be that God is not um, some some existentialists would say uh, that God is ultimate being well, just God is uh, you can call him ultimate being you can call him God you can call him Jehovah you can call him Jehovah Rapha you can call him Jehovah Shammah you can call him all of the names that you have for God have confined him that's why the early Hebrews say he who, he who has no name because we we don't even have the value to speak the name of God. God is so much greater than us. That's what Psalm 90 is all about. It is showing the sovereignty and the greatness of God far and above and beyond the human capacity to understand. What we've got to recognize is God is. And God is within us. That's what the word Emmanuel means. Uh, they said you should call Jesus Emmanuel call him God with us because God came to tabernacle with us in the presence of Jesus Christ and when he left he said I'm not going to leave you comfortless but I'm going to send you God help me here the paracletos the Holy Ghost who will who will bring back to your remembrance everything that I taught you who's going to convict you of sin who's going to teach you how to understand how to get your life together he's going to show you how to live in the capacity that God wants you to live God is with us he is always with us and when trouble attacks you don't have to wait for God to show up help me somebody he is already there and so and so we're partly right in the song we used to sing in the church that said he may not come when you want him he's always on time he don't have to come nowhere he may not he may not reveal himself when you want him but he's always on time and so instead of us trying to deal with difficulties in our own strength mm -hmm, what we've got to do is run to God for shelter that's why Psalm 91 now becomes so important because Psalm 91 says he that dwelleth in the secret place he that lives that abides that that spends the the bulkhead of your time in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow I'm living under the shadow of God I I'm spending my life under the shadow of God why because I know God is with me and I and I and I can say anywhere I go that God is my refuge I preached that Sunday morning out of Psalm 46 that God is my refuge and my strength a very present or the NIV says an ever present help in trouble in Psalm 91 he says uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall live shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge God help me here he is my fortress he is my God and so in him uh, somebody gonna trust in the Lord I will trust <laughs> in the Lord I will trust that's where these songs come from these songs have great theology that I trust in God why because I know God's gonna be there for me how many of you have had somebody in your life you couldn't trust the reason you couldn't trust them because they at one point in time they were not there for you when you needed them there was never a time in our lives there is never a time in our lives when God is not there for us even though we can't detect him even though I old preachers used to say uh, that you've got to trust God when you can't trace him I, I, I don't know he's here I can't see him I, I don't have any evidence right now in the midst of this tragedy God is with us he says he says what God will do and I'll, I'll, I'll go through Psalm 91 for a minute I don't want to hang out there too long he says what God will do surely he shall deliver me he shall set me free uh, from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he he it's a whole lot of noise about this pestilence hear me in the spirit it's a whole lot of noise 
people make a lot of noise about this pestilence. Now, I would do a study on pestilence and help you real quick and make you understand that anytime you hear the word pestilence, uh, that's why people ain't really saying that this is a pestilence, this is a plague. They're not saying that because a plague or a pestilence is, is punishment from God. <laughs> So, so we won't say that. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll say that it's a virus, uh, but but a virus uh, like a like like a like a uh, uh, biological virus. You have to understand is that maybe uh, I'm, 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 this is speculation, and we probably shouldn't speculate. But maybe while we pray so much for God to end this, maybe. This is a noisome pestilence. Maybe this is God exacting some judgment. May, we we can't. We, do you know? Do do you have firsthand information that this is not God exacting judgment? We don't know. But in the midst of it, watch this. God is with us, protecting us, dealing with us in a way that His Word declares that he deals with his people. We are protected by God. That's why God told most telling people, get in the house. We're protected by God. So he says, he'll deliver you. Uh, he says, he'll, 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 uh, he shall cover thee. Listen to what God says. He shall cover thee. Verse four of Psalm 91. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou, what? Shalt thou trust. He says, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now, anybody that knows Bible um, understands that the truth of God is God's word. When Jesus prays uh, the high priestly prayer and he prays for us, um, he tells he tells God, now I need you to sanctify them in John 17. He says, I need you to sanctify them by thy truth. What's the truth of God? Thy word is truth okay that didn't get it for you uh john john 14 6 the most controversial verse in the bible jesus said i'm gonna tell you what truth is i am the way i am the truth i am the life in case you didn't get that no man cometh to the father but by me it's going to upset some people, but that's just the reality of what the Bible says. I'm a biblicist. I believe in the Bible. Uh, and so scripture tells me that ain't no way to get to God but through Jesus. And so if Jesus said it, I believe it. And in my mind, that settles it. And so the reality is he says he's truth. So, so the truth of God becomes, watch this, our shield and our buckler. He'll fight for us and he'll protect us. Now, uh, he's not physically here to do that so he has left us the word that becomes our protector and our fighter I don't have to fight you in my own strength I don't have to deal with life in my own strength can I come alongside of you real quick and help you uh, because because Jesus uh, if you want to see how he fought wars that were that were fought against those uh, who were of God Jesus did not fight with conventional weaponry in in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus is thrust into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil uh, in verse 3 the tempter came to him and said if thou be the son of God command these stones now he is the word but he refers to the word and says it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God the word referred to the word and then spoke the word about the word that will transform any situation that comes against the people of God are y'all hearing what I'm saying you have to understand life from the perspective of the scriptures if you're going to live it as a believer in Christ Jesus in this world that is trying to divert your attention from the divine. And so he says that the word or the truth will be your shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by day. I just read your terror all in the newspaper. He says, nor for the arrow that flieth by night. He says, nor, now listen, this virus is active more at night than it is during the daytime because while you sleep 
uh, it is able to invade areas of your life. Are y'all hearing me? It is able to invade areas of your nasal passages and invade areas in your lungs that are more active in the daytime uh, because your breathing is different and, and all kinds of, I'm not a physiologist, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a doctor, but I'm saying the virus attacks you at night. The Bible says that you don't need to be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, <clears throat> nor for the pestilence, there's that word again, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. But watch this. It shall not come close to you. It shall not come nigh thy dwelling. Why? Because God is protecting you. He says, only with thine eyes shall, uh, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague, uh oh, here it is, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, can I back that up again? The plague ain't gonna come nigh your dwelling because you're not crazy. Come here. The plague is not gonna come nigh your dwelling, not because you challenge the plague, and say, God has got me, and you walk out here in the street and don't practice social distancing, and you don't wash your hands when you're supposed to, and you're not doing the things to protect yourself. Now listen, God ain't gonna do what you're supposed to do. Come here. God is not gonna do what you are supposed to do. Don't sit around and, and, and say, I'm gonna go wherever I wanna go. Some of you pastors, you need to check yourself before you wreck your people. God is not gonna do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I said it, I meant it, and, I, and I, I'm here to represent it. God is not going to do what you're supposed to do. So you're, you're, you're going to challenge God and say, I, I know God is going to protect me, so you're going to walk into a room full of the germs that's going to kill you and then have the expectation that God is going to keep you. No, you done lost your mind. Let's, let's come on. Let's be real. Let, 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 this is this is this is who I am. I'm real. I'm not gonna sit up here all pontifical and try to say all of the right things. I'm gonna tell you what God says. I'm gonna tell you uh, how to appropriate that, and then I'm gonna tell you some stuff that makes common sense. And common sense says if this virus is airborne, if this virus is still. Um, uh, shrouded by a lot of uncertainty. If this virus is more viral, they say 10 times uh, or even greater, um, uh, more communicable and more dangerous than the common cold or the flu. Now, you know how easy it is for you to catch cold when you come to church. Uh huh. Uh, so now you're going to put people in harm's way because you want to prove a point. And God says, if you put yourself out there like that, what protection do you really have? You've defied the, the realities of the nature that you live in. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody down that's having church, but uh, I'm trying to give people some common sense. And common sense says this viral outbreak uh, is such that proximity is important. And if you don't keep the proper proximity, it is easy to contract this virus. And so uh, God says, listen. So, y'all, uh, obviously we've had some technical difficulties uh, trying to work out this new camera. And that thing just went off on me. Um, what I want to do, what I want to do, I want to just real quickly. Um, yeah. All right. There we go. Let me let me real quickly close us out because we're really uh, past time tonight. Um, but I want to close out with this. I, I want you to understand this. <clears throat> Whenever you're dealing with difficulties like we're dealing with tonight, like we've been dealing with since really, y'all are faithful. Y'all are faithful. Bless your heart. Um, Whenever you're dealing with difficulties like we've been dealing with for this year, I need you to run to the shelter of God. That's what that Psalm 91 is all about. Run to the shelter of God. Even in the worst crisis that we could ever imagine, we ought never fear. Every human emotion that we have is, is given to us by God. But fear can be the most crippling emotion that we have. Are y'all hearing me? 
But we've got to recognize in the midst of our fears that the greater one is with us. And he's given us his spirit to combat any kind of spirit of fear. That's what, that's what 2 Timothy 1.7, y'all, somebody type that up. 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, come on, spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Somebody type 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us spirit of fear. But watch this, because the scriptures will help you through any type of situation that you're dealing with. Uh, Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, uh, I know that the virus is, is crazy, but I can do all things. Now, take the virus out of the way and deal with your own have about living, the fears that you have about just doing something different, the fears that you have each and every day. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. Who uh, Joshua got a word from the Lord when he was about to experience something brand new that after this virus, life is going to be brand new for most of us. Um, the, 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 there's probably going to be a great recession, more than likely a great depression. Those are economic terms that says things are very, very bad. But yet in the midst of that, God says, as he said to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 somebody type that Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 he says strong and of good courage for God says be not afraid neither be thou dismayed why for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest wherever you go God is with you and so that psalm uh, comes up again in, in the midst of our trial and he says the Lord uh, 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 is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust who are you going to trust who are you going to trust? You going to trust the news? The president was right with some of that stuff. It's fake news, some of it, some of it. So I'm not going to trust the news media. I'm not even going to trust the president. I'm going to trust God. Are you hearing me? I'm going to trust God. And so, and so, in Psalm 93, Psalm 93. Somebody type that. Psalm 93, verse four. Psalm 93, verse four. He says, "The Lord on high is mightier. Listen, than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. It's just making noise." Those situations, those circumstances, those negativities, all of the stuff that you have to deal with, it's just making noise and God is mightier than all of the noise that you're dealing with. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? And so, and so I can rest assured that while I'm going through and I, ex and I express my faith in God rather than, rather than express, exposing my fear, what I can be assured of is Psalm 145, 18. Somebody, somebody type that. Psalm 145, 18. Somebody type Psalm 145, 18. Psalm 145, 18 says, The Lord is nigh. He's close. He's in your proximity. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon his name. His presence is ever present. Because he is the I am who am, is, was, were, and is to come. He is always here. He's all, I, I need you to get that. I need you to get that. I need you to, to just encourage yourself with the fact that God is always here. And, and what God does for us, uh, he gives us hope. My God, everybody say hope. God gives us hope. And here is the hope. And I'm going to leave you with this. I apologize that we have technical difficulties tonight, but I'm going to leave you with this. God says to us in Romans chapter 8, one of the most prevalent and powerful scriptures that we have out. Romans 8, 28. And we know, if I say we know, I know, I know. I need y'all to type that. Let me know y'all with me. Type, type, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Are y'all hearing me? We, we've got to know that. We've got to be assured of that. That no, it may not look good in the beginning. It may not look good right now. It may not look good two years from now. But all things, if you are connected to God, if you are understanding that everything in the physical and the and the natural 
comes from the spiritual. If you understand that in order for the spiritual to invade the natural, that the word of God, come on y'all, has got to be expressed in the natural, then I will confess to myself, I know that all things work together for good. Because I am, see put yourself in there and personalize it, because I am one that loves God. Because I am the called according to God's purpose. I know, I don't have an inkling of an idea. I don't have um, a, 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 an ethereal concept. I know that whatever I've got to deal with is going to work out for good. The ultimate understanding of it, if I'm a child of God, is that it's going to work out for good because God is working it out on my behalf. He is the, he is the, the Lord of the heavenly host, the armies of heaven, and he is with us and he is our refuge. Are y'all hearing me? So I have a covenant relationship with God. I'm connected to God spirit to spirit. The spirit of the living God lives in me, in me. God is with me. And now he's given me access to his throne. He's given me access to his power. He's given me instruction of his presence. And he's given me ability through his word. And so as I, as I recognize who he is, as I understand he's with me, as I speak as he has spoken, stop speaking defeat over your life. Stop telling yourself things that'll keep you from doing. I'm talking from experience. I've talked myself out of so many different things because I wasn't able. Well, I don't have to be able. God is able. And he gives me his ability in the person and the power of his spirit. I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fret. I'm going to trust God because his word says that when I trust him, all things work together for good. Are y'all hearing me? I love each and every last one of you. And I want you to know that you can be encouraged because we're going to get through this. We're going to get through it because God is with us. And that's the message I'm going to present. I'm going to keep presenting it in different ways so that you can get it in your mind and start understanding now. Now that God is with me, how do I appropriate him in my life? How, how do I take the spirit of the living God that he's placed in me? And how do I work with the spirit to do what God has willed for my life? Those are the things that you need to start thinking about. You need to start thinking about God now. Now that all of this has happened. And you've got my attention. You focused me now. I was blurry in my vision. I was I was discombobulated in my thought process. I really didn't know. I'm 50 some years old. I'm 60 some years old. I'm 70 some years old. I'm 20 years old. I wasn't sure of what it is that you wanted me to do. But since we've come to this time and place where anybody that's on this broadcast right now has never seen before. And, and, and most of the people who are in this world right now has never seen before. We've never seen this world like this. And so I need to know, God, what do you need me to be working on in the interim? What do you need me to be figuring out about you that you can show me more about me so that I can understand what my role is when this is over? Where, where do you want me? How are you going to position me? How, how are you preparing me now? for what's going to happen. Those are the things you need to be considering. Stop worrying about what it, you know, I mean, come on. God give you all this time. Stay in the house and do what you gotta do. Get with God and let him determine what your role is. Because in the aftermath, the saints are gonna have to show up. After this is over, the saints. And so I love you all. I apologize again for our technical difficulties. Uh, at 6.30, we'll be praying. This is our mode. This is our operational mode going forward, at least till the end of April. Uh, we'll be here. Uh, we'll be online. I'll be coming back giving lives to give you some information. Some other people in our church will be coming on, giving you information, uh, updates about what we're doing because we still do ministry. Let me tell you all something. Today's Tuesday. Uh, get your gifts in, please, ma'am. Please, sir. The church still is going on. 
Uh, the church is still operating. We need you to support your church with your tithes and offerings. I thank God for all of you who have been faithful in the last three weeks of making sure that your tithes and your offerings were online and they were, they were, they were, I mean, it was beautiful. I thank God for you. But some of you that can't attend, we need to talk to our people and have them to understand that the church must continue to be supported. We must continue to support the church. There's a lot of ministry that we we don't want to miss out on because we forget about the fact that we I just put an article up on Facebook the other day that said now the church should be supported more so than any other time before. Because now the church is going to be called on more so than any other time before. And I'm not going I'm not gimmicky. I ain't trying to, you know, I, yes, we are in the time of seed time and harvest. And, and I appreciate that. But the reality is, if you have the spirit of God on the inside of you, then the spirit of God has already told you what we need uh, and how we're going to move forward. And so I appeal to the spirit of God in you that you would be faithful to your giving. Do not give up on your giving if you can. Now, now some of you are losing your jobs. That's why we want everybody to be faithful to their giving, because we're going to have to bless people. We're going to have to help people who are going through. Are y'all hearing me? And so uh, let's be faithful to that element. Continue to pray. Continue to practice social distancing and all of the protocols that we hear from the medical community. Continue to do that. I need you safe. I need you safe. And so and so I love you. Uh, you'll be hearing from your deacons. I'll be on a conference call with our deacons this Thursday, a conference call with our, with our preachers probably on Friday, uh, some of our other leadership so that we can make sure that we're staying on point. Uh, but but I just want you all to know how much I love each and every one of you. I miss you terribly. Uh, but let's stay connected right here. When you come on next week, share with your friends. When you get on the, on the broadcast Sunday, share it with as many people as possible. Uh, we want the word to go out to as many people as possible. But understand this. God is with us. He will always be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And in the midst of this, we appeal to the isness of God. God is. And he, he, he tells us that he's whatever that we need. Amen. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Y'all be blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for all that you've done in our midst. We thank you for every person who is on this broadcast. I thank you for their families. I thank you for their heart for ministry. I thank you for their love for you. I pray even now, God, that you continue to be a protective hedge around them. I pray, God, that you would bind their families together in a way that they've not been bound for years. I pray for marriages. I pray for relationships between husbands and wives, fathers and sons, daughters and mothers, aunties and cousins cousins and uncles and nephews, I pray, God, that you would just move in this time period, that people might understand that life is more than what we've made it out to be. I pray that people understand in the name of Jesus that there are more things to do than what we have put ourselves in the box of doing. I pray that after this is concluded, that we will loose ourselves from the spirit of busyness and that we will spend time in the presence of the living God. Have your way in these people's lives tonight, for I love you and I praise you and I love them and I want your love to be expressed in their lives. We ask it tonight in the name that matters, the only name that matters, the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we all said together, amen. I'll see y'all on Sunday right here on UBC's Facebook network as well as our uh, YouTube network. Love y'all. Next week, we're praying that we have our Union Baptist Church Bible study group uh, put together. So we'll, we'll let you know about that later on in the week going forward. Uh, hopefully we'll have that together for next week. But until then, uh, y'all stay safe and stay blessed. Love you.